Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk you through how to use my new device, Live Animator. It's a Max for Live device that lets you animate a series of still images, either manually or through the built in envelope follower or LFO. I originally made the device for a project where I had a character open and close its mouth based on audio input uh, to make it look as though it was speaking. The project never got finished, uh, but I kept the device as I thought it could be useful to keep for future use and to share with anyone looking to do something similar. So the device requires a folder of images which you need to pre-prepare. So let's look at the probably the most simple, uh, which is the Pac-Man one I made. Um, this basically just consists of three parts. We have a main sort of area here, and then we've got an upper jaw, which we can animate. And we've got a lower jaw, which we can animate as well. And basically all I've done here is start with them both in the sort of mouth closed position. And all I've done is export that first image there and then move these ever so slightly and export that as the next image, move them again, export that as another image um, until I've got basically all the way to the mouth open there. And you just follow the same principle for any animation that you're creating until you're left with a folder of images. So going back to our folder, here we can see we've got all the, I've made 24 Pac-Man images with him gradually opening his mouth. And we can see those there. Then all we do is just drop the folder into the device. The images are now stored and you can scrub through them using the animate slider. Let's put it back on my original images here and we'll put it back on envelope follower. Okay, so you can animate the image in several ways. First of all we've got the host mode now this basically frees up the animate slider here uh, to allow you to move it manually. Um, you can of course map this to automation or you can map it to a MIDI controller and the animate function is already mapped on Ableton Push. In envelope follow mode, the slider responds to any incoming audio. Uh, you would use the sensitivity here to adjust how far the slider moves. Use rise to adjust how quickly the slider reaches the maximum value when reacting to the incoming audio. And fall to adjust how quickly the slider returns to zero when there is no audio. And the third way to control it is through the built-in LFO. Here the animate, di sorry, the animate slider is uh, hard mapped basically to the internal LFO. You can choose different LFO shapes, um, square, which is basically just on off, sine wave, ramp, triangle, random, or you can design your own LFO shape here. Uh, hold down Option or Alt to bend the line or just double click to add new points. You can reverse the shape of the LFO. Let's just slow this down a little. And you can adjust the things you would typically be able to adjust in an LFO, such as rate, uh, the offset, the depth, the phase, the curve. Or 
or human eyes just to add some uh, randomness into the LFO shape. Let's put it back on envelope follower. So the resulting animation can be played in a pop-up window. Uh, it will also output automatically to Siphon on Mac, meaning that you can stream the video in other apps or other Ableton devices. Let's just close this window for now and we'll look at how I've streamed this to another Ableton device. You'll notice the window here is not the same as the window here that we've been that we're streaming to. Uh, this is because I'm using Ebo Suite. Um, this allows you to receive um, siphon message, uh, siphon streams uh, from other applications. So what I'm doing, I'm using a combination of uh, my own device here, and I'm using Zwobot, uh, which is just a video player. Well, <laughs> it's more than just a video player, uh, but for the purposes of this, I've used it just as a video player. So if we press play, we've got a video playing here and I'm receiving um, each of these streams on two different channels and I'm just kind of merging them together. And that is basically it. Um, few other functions here. We've got a zoom, so we can zoom in on any images that you've got loaded and you can pan these left and right, up and down double click will reset. Uh, if we zoomed right out, uh, you can use these bound mode functions here to determine what happens when the um, image goes out of the side of the screen, if you will. Uh, so we can either have it wrap, we can have it clip, where it just seems to take anything that's touching the edges and extending them. Uh, or we can fold where the image is kind of mirrored. Well, let's just put this back to normal. Note that when you save your project, or if you drag the device into your user library as a preset, the path of the folder is saved within the device. This means that as long as you don't actually move the folder that you've dragged in to anywhere else, uh, the device will remember its location and it will load the correct images when it starts up. The maximum amount of images that I would recommend would be 128. If you're using it for the purposes of this, there's no real need to have any more than, say, 24 to 30 images used in total. Uh, anything else is just kind of excess if you're just using it for kind of animating a, a mouth. Uh, but obviously there are other kind of creative uses you can use where you would require, you know, more images. Um, one idea that I had uh, was sort of importing a bunch of random images and set the LFO onto random. Uh, in fact, I will show you. Um, so here I've got Vincent looking a bit confused. Uh, let's set this on random. Let's turn that human eyes off. So as you can see, uh, I've got this originally as a green screen and I'm using uh, a keying um, device in Ebo Suite um, to key the background out. And we can use the rate to sort of jump between the images a bit quicker. So yeah, that's another idea I had, but I guess there are other things you can do, but primarily, I mean, all it was used for was um, creating an, an animated mouth, uh, which it does seem to do quite well. Um, other uses may or may not work, but I'd be interested to know how you get on. Please let me know in the comments. Okay, that's it for today. Um, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.